Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the TACRAO Tennessee Virtual College Fair powered by StriveScan. My name is Julian, and I am going to be your uh, facilitator for this evening. Um, I'm going to get started with some housekeeping tips here. So if you have any questions, please feel free to use the Q&A chat box at the bottom of your screen. Make sure that you address the presenter or the college that you want to answer your question. And you can do so at any time throughout the whole session. It doesn't have to be just to the presenter who's speaking at the time. And your camera and microphones are off. So all you have to do is sit back, relax, and enjoy the information. And then if you want to sign up for any more sessions, we do have a day or two uh, left of this uh, college fair. So you can uh, go back to strivescan.com slash Tennessee and you can sign up for more sessions there. Um, along with looking at back on this recording or any other recordings of the sessions through this fair, you can do so at the same link. So I am going to uh, start giving the floor over to our first presenter at Auburn University. So while they are getting the screen share set up, just wanna encourage you to throw in any questions you have throughout the evening into the Q&A chat box. And Auburn University, you have the floor. Perfect. Thank you so much. Hello, everyone. My name is Katie Morgan. I am your admissions advisor because I recruit the entire state of Tennessee. Um, so let's get right into talking about Auburn. I think a good place to start often is geographically speaking. And so you can see that we are located in Auburn, Alabama, in East Central Alabama. I often say that we're in a really good triangle. So we're a couple hours south of Birmingham, a couple hours south of Atlanta in the other direction, and a few hours north of the coastline. So again, nice little triangle. And we're not too far away from from really anywhere in the state of Tennessee, which is nice. Uh, Auburn itself is about 70,000 residents, so non-Auburn students. You can see there's a ranking here that we've gotten the top spot for the Southern Living's list of um, the South's best college towns. There's also lots of other rankings, like best place to start a small business, best, best place to raise a family, best place to retire. So there's a lot of folks from a lot of different backgrounds and ages that want to be in Auburn, and I get it. I'm literally here now. Uh, so let's pretend that we're on campus together, especially for those of you that haven't been able to visit campus. So we've been able to do campus tours and hope to continue that through the summer and the fall moving forward. But let's pretend that we're on campus. We're on the tallest building, which is called the Haley Center, specifically on the Eagle's Nest. No, there's not an eagle. I don't know why it's called that, but it does give you a good eagle eye view, if you will. And just trust me, and amongst all the buildings that probably look the same, you're seeing a good chunk of central campus, which is, I think is a good indicator of how walking friendly. And yes, it's a big school, but I think um, would surprise you how compact in a good way that the campus is. Lots of green space and trees in the midst of all of it too. So uh, as far as campus goes, you're getting a somewhat good look of it. Uh, there's also about 30,000 students total, about 25,000 undergraduates and about 4,800 students come into the incoming freshman class each year. So we certainly are a big school, big SEC school, but our classes are relatively small compared to the size of the, the class. So we really want to make that, that big school feel um, where it matters, like number of majors, over 150, close to 600 student organizations, but we want to maintain the integrity of a small school feel where it matters too, which is certainly that in-class experience. Now, going in a different direction than I often do for presentations, I want to talk about three different themes or things about Auburn. So this fir first one's kind of a cheesy name. It's a land-grant thing, uh, and it's it's a, a, an homage to our land-grant history. And I know we've got at least one more land-grant school in the crowd today. Uh, but if you're not familiar with the history of higher education in America, I wouldn't be surprised. I wasn't until I took a class about it in my master's level um, or master's education. But all that to say, College in uh, this country for a long time from the colonies to about the 1800s was a pretty elite and elitist group for very specific reasons like civic leadership roles and religious roles for young rich white men. Fast forward through a couple of hundred years worth of history and a, an act was passed at the federal level that created land grant colleges. Each state has at least one. Auburn is the state of Alabama's first. Uh, and land grants are really built upon this mission of practical and hands-on research and experience to ultimately help students' lives, make their lives better and everybody else they interact with. So that's that's an ethos. That's the ethos of who we are as an institution. Uh, and so you can kind of see some before and after pictures and good example of the land grant mission in action back in the day was things like agriculture and engineering, which is still the case today, but some forward thinking options are things like our 20K Home Initiative for our College of Architecture students. Um, so building true structures for less than $20,000 as well as within the College of Engineering, our Cybersecurity Research Center. So exciting stuff all around. 
couple of things to expect the unexpected. Oftentimes people rightly know us for things like engineering and business, but we've got one of the best fashion merchandising programs in the country. We've got a culinary science program um, with a new building that's being built as we speak. Uh, there's a mock-up drawn there. We've got a beautiful performing arts center. So the arts is certainly important to us as a community as well. We've got small class sizes. I don't think I mentioned that, but that's kind of a look at one of our classroom buildings in the bottom. And then the biggest picture here is one of our graduating classes of our Eagles program. So it's students with learning differences and they're able to get an Auburn degree, which is super exciting. And if you're interested in, in special education and being a teacher, this could be a great thing for you to get involved in as well. And the last quick slide are our rich traditions. Um, so Abby the Tiger is our mascot. He's won the national championship. They exist. They happen at Disney World. I've been to one of them, but they happen uh, every year. And he's won the nine times. We also have lots of traditions like the eagle flight before the football games, as well as rolling the trees with um, toilet paper of all things for, for our celebration. So lots of other things that our, our students really love, but I want to hit on very briefly. To be clear, this is the fall 2021 application process. I don't know yet about what next year will look like and whether we'll be test flexible. So use it as a guide and not law. Um, but we had an application either on our website or the Common App. It's whatever works best for you. Submitting your application is um, the good way to start off, submitting your transcript as well. And then if we continue to be test flexible, um, we'll probably have some supplemental document requirements. So for this year, it was a graded writing assignment, ACT or SAT scores, expanded resume or AP or IB scores. So again, I don't know everything yet, but I do know the application will open in August, and I'll also know that I will have more information for you in the month of June. Um, so that's at least a good start, but if you need anything between now and then or anything in the future, this is my contact information. So hopefully I'll be able to see you somewhere in Tennessee if we're able to travel safely. If not, this is a good way to reach me. So thank you so much, everybody, and I will pass it back over to you, Julian. Alrighty, thank you so much. And uh, we'll get set for our next presenter from Mississippi College. And uh, yeah, if there's any questions you have throughout the night, use that Q&A chat box and sign up for some more sessions at strivescan.com slash Tennessee. And Mississippi College, you have the floor. Awesome, thank you so much. Hey guys, my name is Carrie Parrish. I'm the Regional Admissions Counselor for Mississippi College, which means I live here in the Memphis area but I'm in charge of recruiting the whole state of Tennessee and DeSoto County. Um, so I'll go ahead and just jump on in. Um, Mississippi College is a Christian, Christian university, private Christian university located in Clinton, Mississippi, which is right outside the capital of Jackson. And we were founded in 1826, which makes us the oldest university in the state. Um, and since 1826, our vision and our mission statement that we have remained faithful to is that Mississippi College seeks to be recognized as a university known for academic excellence and the cause of Christ. Um, MC has over 5,200 students, um, around 84 to 85 undergraduate programs, over 60 graduate programs, and one of the only law schools in Mississippi. And we actually established the first physician's assistant school in the state. Um, as you can see here on this slide, there's a little bit of the breakdown of the different ways, um, the different areas of study and the different areas and the concentrations of the different schools. Um, we have about a 16 to 1 student to professor ratio, which lends to a lot of active involvement in the classroom and developing personal relationships with your professors. Um, our campus is sits, it sits on 320 acres of gorgeous green space, beautiful live oak, all brick buildings, and it's really gorgeous. Um, and so with that being said, our campus is home to 18 NCAA Division II sports teams, over 100 clubs and organizations, that's been updated since that slide, <laughs> and about five campus ministries. As you can see in this one, it's a little bit of the breakdown of the different areas of involvement in the different clubs. Um, moving on to a little bit more of the technical side, yes, private e Christian education can be expensive. Um, we agree to that. It's a premium to pay, but also, um, alternatively, uh, the private education that we offer on average is $15,000 less than the average comparable uh, private university which makes us super affordable. Um, and at MC, we offer two big scholarship competitions and we start doing merit-based scholarships um, with an 18 ACT. Uh, we also do need-based scholarships, but I'll get to that in a little bit. Um, this is a little bit of the breakdown of our application process. We have a free application and that will open up this summer for juniors. It's super easy. It takes about 15 minutes to apply. And once you send in your test scores, your transcript, 
and your FAFSA then were able to offer a scholarship package. Um, and so the two things I mainly encourage you to do is to apply and to visit campus. To be able to get on campus to get a feel uh, what it's like to be a student at MC is huge. And so as you can see on the slide, um, it's super easy to find on our website. You just do whatever you're looking for slash the word. So mc.edu slash apply or slash visit. Um, and so I know I've thrown a ton of information at you, um, but the main thing I wanna leave you with um, at MC, as a recent grad from Mississippi College, um, we believe that our students should receive a quality education while deepening their faith, fostering a lasting community and building a foundation for a bright future. Um, since I live here in the Memphis area, I would love to get to meet with you, get to talk to you about Mississippi College, give you some more information specific to what you're interested in. And if you have any questions, please like drop them below and I would love to help in any way that I can. Thanks. Thanks so much. Our next presenter is going to be from Jacksonville State University. We're going to let them get the screen share up and running. But again, if there are any questions you have throughout the night for any of our presenters, please use that Q&A chat box and we'll leave the floor over to Jacksonville State University. Thanks so much, Julian. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Brett Underwood and I'm the coordinator of out of state recruitment at Jacksonville State University. Um, so I also am your admissions counselor for those of you in Tennessee. Um, and I'm excited to, to work with you and excited that, that you're here today. So thank you for joining us. Um, I, I say coordinator of state recruitment because we are located in Jacksonville, Alabama. Um, we are in Northeast Alabama. Um, so, so for some city points there for reference, um, we're a little under two hours away from Chattanooga and a little under three and a half from Nashville. Um, we're um, about an hour east of um, Birmingham and, and about an hour and a half from Atlanta. Uh, so, so in a great location um, for a lot of things to do big city-wise. Um, as a community in Jacksonville itself, it's a pretty um, small area. Uh, it's a very city, or it's a very college-centered city um, where, where a lot of things are happening for the university and for students at the university. Um, the numbers that you see there, the, the 9,000 students, the clubs and organizations, the academic programs, all of those kind of indicate one thing, um, and that's where that we're a mid-sized institution. Uh, I, I know you see a lot of numbers and stats and such with different colleges. Uh, and, and so I wanna tell you a little bit what those numbers mean for you and for your student experience. Um, the best way that somebody described it to me that kind of gives it a visual is that when you walk into the cafeteria, you're always gonna see a group of students that, that you know, um, that, that you've connected with, that you're friends with, and you're always gonna see a group of students that you don't know. Um, so you kind of have that, that balance there. Um, looking at the, the different popular spots, um, the one I want to kind of highlight is the Longleaf Studios. Um, and I want to highlight it because it connects a little bit to the academic side. Um, so Longleaf Studios is, is a professional film studio. Um, it still functions as a professional film studio. Um, it's actually where our film major is housed. Uh, it's as recently as um, a couple years ago, um, a movie that came on Netflix in fall of 2020. Um, I don't remember the name of De The Devil All the Time, I think is what it was called, um, with Robert Pattinson and Tom Holland. It was actually filmed largely in, in Jacksonville and, and used our studios there. Um, and, and so the reason I want to highlight that is because one of our goals academically is to, to really give you um, solid, good resources of facilities and experiences that will translate really well to the work that you're doing after you graduate. Um, so making sure that you're getting that hands-on experience while you're in school. Um, I talked a little bit about, about Jacksonville earlier. Um, we really do have a, a great community support system. Um, so whether you are in the arts or athletics or um, studying to be a doctor or whatever it is you're looking to do, the community really rallies around you um, and, and tries to help our student body. And, and so it's great to have that support. Um, I've talked a lot about the, the support academically, um, but I do want you to know as well, that, like you're, you're more than just a student. Um, you are a full person and we want to take care of that as well um, and make sure that you're being successful in all ways. And, and so um, in addition to the Academic Center for Excellence there that you see, um, there are a lot of other ways that we want to make sure that we're providing resources for you to be healthy, um, to, to be successful both in the classroom and out of it. Um, that, that's really important. And you can see the alumni network. Um, I actually work with um, a large portion of our alumni I and mean, connecting them with, with incoming students. Uh, to make sure that you're getting perspectives of what it's like to be in college, but also that you're building relationships to, to stay connected after for job opportunities or internship opportunities, things of that sort. Um, 
looking a little bit about kind of our, our student body, um, we do have students from a little bit all over. Uh, and so when you get there coming from out of state, you're not going to be alone in that. Um, you're you're going you're gonna to have people who, who maybe are not exactly from where you're from, but they might have a similar background to you or um, have, have experienced similar things to you. We want to bring different people from all across the world together um, and, and celebrate those differences and, and learn about those differences uh, and then be able to send you out. So when you go to different places post-graduation that you're prepared to be successful. Um, another aspect that I've witnessed in, in my few years from a kind of administrative standpoint at JSU is how much student voices are heard. Um, some of the things listed there have changed because students stepped up and, and gave their thoughts and ideas and the, the president of the university and other leadership have listened to those and adapted it accordingly um, and made life better for students. Um, much like our, our friends at Auburn, we are also test optional for this current year and are unsure about um, next year. So, so we'll keep you posted on that. Um, and so just keep in touch with us. The application is pretty short and simple. Um, like, like Mississippi College was mentioning, 10, 15 minutes, uh, pretty much demographic information, and then just your transcripts, um, then either application fee or a fee waiver, uh, if you have that as well. Um, we'll talk quickly about cost. Uh, I know that's often a big concern. Um, we work really hard to, to try to make sure that finances isn't a barrier for you attending. Um, that's our ultimate hope with all this. So you can see the total estimated cost there. We are estimating that the, the in-state tuition rate. Um, the reason being is that our policy is that if you're getting a scholarship of any kind from JSU, then you automatically qualify to have that out-of-state fee waived and pay the in-state tuition price. Um, and I'll tell you that in my two and a half years since working for Jacksonville State with out-of-state students, um, we have worked with every single student to get a scholarship of some type so they could be paying that in-state tuition price. Um, so again, just trying to, to knock down as many barriers as possible. Um, and ultimately, like that price is not what you're gonna be paying because you're gonna be getting things to subtract from it in scholarships and financial aid and such. Um, other ways to get scholarships aside from just the academic ones is competitive ones or performance things. So areas of the arts or athletics. Um, we try to have a, a wide variety. And lastly, here's my contact info. So please do not hesitate to reach out to me um, with any questions you have uh, about anything, whether it's JSU or just general college related. Um, I want you to go where it's right for you and, and to, to find the right fit. Um, and I'll echo what our friends from Mississippi College said that um, visiting campus is huge and I would encourage you to do that. Um, so please reach out as you have questions and I look forward to hearing your questions tonight. All right, thank you so much. Our next presenter is going to be from the University of Mississippi, Ole Miss, and we'll allow them to get their screen share up and running. But if there's any other sessions that you want to check out in the next couple of days, you can do so by going to strivescan.com slash Tennessee, and we'll leave it over to Ole Miss. All right, thanks so much, Jillian. Hi, everyone. My name is Neil Ann Shambly, and I'm an admissions counselor for the University of Mississippi. Also joining me tonight is my colleague, Carmen Morris. She's based in the Nashville, Tennessee area. I'm based in the Memphis, Tennessee area and have the opportunity to recruit students um, in that Tennessee area, as well as the northern part of Mississippi in the state of Arkansas. We are so excited to be here tonight to share with you about the University of Mississippi, or more, more so affectionately known as Ole Miss. We are a campus size of about 22,000 undergraduate students, um, 17,000 undergraduate students on the Oxford main campus, um, and represent all 50 states in the United States, as well as 90 countries across the world. We are located in one of the best college towns in America, in my opinion. Uh, Oxford, Mississippi is in the northern part of Mississippi, so an hour and a half south of Memphis, Tennessee, three and a half hours from Nashville South. Oxford, Mississippi is about 24,000 residents, so a small uh, quintessential southern college town, has one of the coolest uh, independent uh, smallest bookstores in the country uh, that you can see here in this picture at our downtown square, as well as some of the best southern cuisine. Um, Oxford has been consistently ranked as one of the best small towns in the country as one of the best top college towns as well. So highly recommend a visit to our town and to our university. Our student life at Ole Miss, we have over 300 student organizations. Our student to faculty ratio is 17 to one. Our average classroom size is about 34 to 40 students in a class. And one thing I really like about Ole Miss is that you're able to kind of really get that small private school feel, but at the same time, you have all the resources of a big state school feel. So something that I think is truly unique about Ole Miss, we are a part of the SEC or Southeastern Conference, if you're not familiar with that. We're the second smallest school in the SEC, but we love 
love our traditions at Ole Miss and we love especially our Ole Miss athletics. So that's a fun thing to be a part of uh, when you're a student at the university. Over 100 different majors. I'm certainly not gonna go through all of these tonight, but we are nationally ranked in accounting, pharmacy, business and education. We are the state's oldest engineering school, the state's only public law school, um, as well as Mississippi's only medical, um, dental, physical therapy and occupational therapy program in the state. Um, so something that we're really proud of is our health professions. We also have a lot of great competitive programs like our Honors College, our Croft Institute for International Studies. So all our special programs that you can see at the bottom right. How to apply to Ole Miss, very simple, olemiss.edu forward slash apply. Like all the other colleges tonight have said, it literally will take you about 10 to 15 minutes to apply to the university. If you're a senior, you can still apply to Ole Miss. We are role admissions. Um, if you're a junior, the application will come open for you on July 1st. If you want to apply to the Common App, our Common App process will open on August the 1st. All you need to do is send your transcript to us, pay the application fee of $60. We do not need a test score on file for admission to the university. However, we do need a test score on file for scholarships. We have two types of scholarships at Ole Miss. One that starts off with our academic merit, as you can see here, if you have a 25 ACT, ACT super score as well, 3.0 GPA. We're gonna give you $3,500 per year to the university automatically. The higher that ACT, the more money you're able to receive. And then of course we have competitive scholarships that you're able to apply for through our special programs and scholarships application. We would love for y'all to come visit Ole Miss. We have visits every single day of the week, Monday through Friday, starting at 10 o'clock or two o'clock in the afternoon. We offer a 45 minute information session along with an hour campus tour with one of our student ambassadors. So highly recommend doing that. Easy to go to, to sign up, olemiss.edu forward slash visit. Click the big red button that says schedule a visit. And for juniors listening tonight, we have an awesome junior preview day coming up on April the 17th if you'd like to join us in Oxford for that. This is my contact information. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. Would love to connect with y'all. Shoot me a text, send me an email, connect with me on social media. And thanks so much for listening. Hotty toddy. Awesome. Thank you so much. And our next presenter is going to be University of South Alabama. So we'll let them get their screen share up and running. But just want, I saw some questions uh, going off in the Q&A. So I wanna to continue to encourage those throughout the rest of the session. And we'll leave the floor over to University of South Alabama. Hey everyone, my name is Katie Spillman. I am an admissions officer here at the University of South Alabama. So a little bit about South, we are located in Mobile, Alabama, which is right by the Gulf Coast. Um, we are about 45 minutes from the closest beach, so a lot of our students really love to hit the beach on the weekends um, or, you know, for our long break, spring break, things like that. Our students do really enjoy that. We do have a 1200 acre campus. Um, we do have about 15,000 students on our campus. So we do have a large campus size, but a medium sized student body. So our average class size is around 30 students or so. And our student to faculty ratio is 18 to 1. We do have students from all 50 states and over 70 countries, so we do have a very diverse campus. And we are very well known for our health sciences. Um, we do have a med school, a physical therapy school, um, lots of other health sciences as options for you on our campus. We are home to the USA Health System, so we have two hospitals and a cancer research institute. So these are our academic colleges here. We have our Pat Caps Covey College of Allied Health, our College of Arts and Sciences, College of Education and Professional Studies. We have Engineering, Nursing, Medicine, our College of Business, our School of Computing, and our Honors College. If you are interested in being an honors student here at South, it does require a separate application. We do have over 100 different academic programs. These include our bachelor's, master's, and our doctoral degrees. We do have a lot of students um, come to South for the bachelor's and end up staying through grad school. And um, we do have several different master's and doctoral programs that you may be interested in. So definitely give us a look for that. A little bit about student life. We have over 200 different clubs and organizations on campus. We have things ranging from uh, Greek life to political based clubs, faith based clubs. We have student government. So there really is something for everybody here at South. A couple of our fun traditions that we have on campus. Um, one of my favorites is oozeball, which you can see a picture of right here in the top, um, kind of towards the left a little bit. Um, this is where our students sign up. They play in teams and they play volleyball in 18 inches of mud. So it is really gross. Um, it gets pretty messy, but our students have a lot of fun with it and um, they really, really enjoy it. 
A little bit about our athletics. We do have 17 different Division I teams on campus. We do participate in the Sun Belt Conference. Our men's teams include football, baseball, basketball, cross country, track and field, golf, and tennis. And then our women's teams include soccer, softball, basketball, cross country, track and field, um, golf, tennis, and volleyball. Football, of course, is really popular in the fall. Um, tailgating, all that fun stuff, and then basketball are popular with our students in the spring. A little bit about residence life. So we do have free and limited laundry on campus, which is something that our students do really enjoy and that I thought was really interesting when I first started working for South. Um, you don't have to lug around a bag of quarters in order to do your laundry. You do get a free campus mailbox when you live on campus, as well as Wi-Fi and cable. There are three levels of security in order to get into your room, so it is very safe. There's um, nothing you need to worry about living on campus, but we do have our housing and maintenance staff available 24-7, and we do have a 24-7 um, full working police department on campus as well if you were to need them for anything. Our application process, so for seniors, the application is open now. Um, we do recommend that you apply before July if you're looking to start at South in, um, in this fall in August. So you can go on our website and complete the application at southalabama.edu slash apply. We do have a $35 application fee, but if you do need a fee waiver, um, please feel free to contact me and we can work something out with that. We will need your high school transcripts and we will ask that you send any college transcript over if transcripts over if you are dual enrolled anywhere. Um, we are test optional this year, so you are not required to submit an ACT or SAT score, but they are required if you want to be considered for scholarships. So any of our admission scholarships, which I will go over on the next slide, and we do accept ACT super scores. So if you want to super score your ACT, just feel free to send over all of your test reports from the ACT and we will super score it for you. We do plan on being test optional in some capacity for fall 2022 students. We don't exactly know what it's going to look like yet, but um, just keep an eye out for that for my juniors. Um, generally, we require a 19 ACT and a 2.5 GPA, but that is flexible. Um, so let's say you have an 18 ACT, but you have a 3.0 GPA. Um, you're definitely still con considered admissible to us. So we do uh, definitely recommend that you still apply to South. Um, we encourage anybody who's interested in South to apply. We may require a few extra documents from you as far as you know, letters of recommendation or an essay, but we would let you know that um, after we receive your application. If you're interested in transferring to South, we do require a 2.0 GPA cumulative of all of your previous college work. And our scholarships, so our admission scholarships, these are for incoming freshmen. We do require you to have at least a 21 ACT and a 3.0 GPA, and the uh, scholarships just increase based on your scores. So for example, let's say you have a 25 ACT and a 3.5 GPA, you would get, or you know, a 3.8 GPA, anything above a 3.5, you would get $4,000 per year. And this, these are guaranteed as long as you apply before December of your senior year. Um, and these are automatically applied to your account if you qualify for them. There's no separate application required. We are offering campus tours currently, so if you are interested in coming down to campus, we would absolutely love to have you. You can sign up for campus tours on our website at www.southalabama.edu slash visit. I am doing one-on-one -on -one Zoom meetings if you would like to schedule one with me. Uh, if you just have a couple of questions you need answered or, you know, just want a little bit more information about South, I would be happy to do that. But that is all I got. Um, my name is Katie Spellman. Once again, my contact information is on our website, but my email is kspillman at southalabama.edu if you want any additional information. Thank you. Hey, thank you so much. And last but not least, our final presenter is going to be from Mississippi State University. And we're going to let her get her screen share running. And if there are any questions you have, this is the time to ask them. Go ahead and throw it in the Q&A chat box. But we'll leave it over to Mississippi State University. Good evening, everyone. My name is Stephanie Newman, and I'm a recruiting coordinator for the Office of Admissions and Scholarships at Mississippi State University. So I'm regionally based in Nashville, Tennessee, and I recruit Middle and East Tennessee. So getting started just with a little bit of the history of Mississippi State, we are an SEC school founded in 1878 as Mississippi A&M. 
We are founded as an agriculture and mechanical institution, so that's where our roots lie. However, academically, we have a lot more to offer than just agriculture and engineering. We are a large institution with a little over 22,000 students enrolled on campus. However, we do have a 20 to 1 student to faculty ratio, which is very good for a large institution. We also have about 4,200 acres of campus, but don't worry when you visit, it is very walkable. We will not make you walk all 4,200 acres of campus. Also, our average ACT score for an entering freshman is about a 26.1. So that's just a little bit about the history of MSU. And then on the academic side, as you can see, we have seven different academic colleges, as well as a vet school, and we are home to the Shackles Honors College. Um, some of the majors we are known for are obviously agriculture and engineering, architecture, business, meteorology, of course, anything pre-vet related as well. But if you have any specific questions about a major, feel free to drop that in the chat box below. And then a little bit about where we're located, Starkville, Mississippi, uh, one of my favorite places in the world. Um, we are about four and a half hours from Middle Tennessee and about two and a half hours from Memphis. Um, so in right where you see that star on the map. However, Starkville is what I like to describe as being your quintessential Southern college town. So a lot of what happens in Starkville is centered around the university. So not only is it easy for students to get involved on campus, but it's easy for students to get involved in Starkville as well. Starkville also has a lot of really great local restaurants and boutiques for shopping. And believe it or not, because it is a college town, it's a great place for live music as well. So that's just a little bit about Starkville and where we're located. So to become a Bulldog, um, the application for admission goes live August 1st every year at midnight. You can apply by going to our website, apply.msstate.edu. We're also on the Common App and the Coalition for College Application as well. Um, when you apply, we'll need your official transcript, a $40 application fee, and your ACT or SAT test scores if you've been able to test. Now we understand that due to COVID, lots of students haven't been able to test, so we can still review you for admission without test scores. And if I have any juniors listening, these requirements will apply to you for fall 2022 as well. So looking at the numbers a little bit, out-of-state tuition is currently 23,950 a year, and the estimated total for room board is about 10,436. So before any scholarships or financial aid, you're looking at about 34,386 a year. Now I know those are big numbers, but don't let those scare you because we like to offer a lot of really generous scholarships to out-of-state students. So we have merit scholarships that begin at just a 22 ACT and a 3.0 GPA, and we do super score. And then once you're admitted, you'll have the opportunity to fill out the general scholarship application for leadership and service-based scholarships, departmental scholarships. We also have highly competitive scholarships as well. It's very important that you submit your scholarship application by December 1 of your senior year so that you can have maximum scholarship consideration. And then if we have any military families listening tonight, we do have a veterans waiver, which completely waives out-of-state tuition for four years. And then to echo what some of my colleagues mentioned tonight, visiting campus is the best way to get to know an institution. Um, so we are doing in-person campus visits again. You can sign up by going to campusvisit.msstate.edu. But if you're not comfortable visiting campus just yet, we do offer virtual options as well. Um, however, we would love for you to visit in some capacity and get to know more about Mississippi State. And then here's my contact information. Again, my name is Stephanie Newman. I'm recruiting coordinator for Mississippi State and I serve Middle and East Tennessee. So thank you so much for listening tonight and hail state. All righty, thank you so much to all of our presenters. I'm going to uh, share my screen here. So we will uh, go through some round robin questions. And the first question is going to be, what advice would you give somebody going through the college search process? What advice would you give someone going through the college search process? So we're gonna start right back up with Auburn University and make our way down the list. 
Well, I think that we probably all have lots of really good pieces of advice. So I'll, I'll take one that maybe is more about the actual college application process. And it is figuring out how to check your email regularly and have an organized way to do it. Because for better or for worse, we're probably all sticking, we being universities, sticking with email as the official form of communication, especially with really important stuff. So if it is using the account you already have and just being really thoughtful with how you organize it, especially if you're applying to multiple schools, because it can get it can get really confusing in a lot, or it's creating a whole new email account that's just for college stuff. Um, I just think fi figuring out how to do that in an organized way that works best for you, because there's lots of ways to do it, is um, my piece of advice I'll share for now. Awesome, thank you. And Mississippi College? Um, I would definitely say take your time and explore all your options. Like go to visit multiple schools, even if you found one that you're like, this is the one I want to go to. Take your time, visit lots of schools, take in as much information so you can make a really well-informed decision when you're deciding on which college you want to go to. Awesome. And Jacksonville State University? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I would say to, to connect with us, connect with your admissions counselor, um, one, we have a lot more piece of advice than, than just this one we're giving you, so we can give you those individually. Um, but also, it can be a stressful and overwhelming process, and we want to make it as little of that as possible and want to walk with you through it, and so connect with us. Great. Thank you. And Ole Miss? I couldn't agree more with what everybody's already said, but I think my piece of advice is to look at the college process as like a college journey and really enjoy what you're experiencing with, with every school you go to visit. And also I'm going to, I'm going to take this from Carbon, um, but she said, take pictures when you're on visits uh, so that you can go back and document what you've seen. So that'd be my piece of advice. Awesome. And uh, University of South Alabama. Hi. Yeah. Um, my advice would be just to, you know, visit campus um, and just figure out, you know, where is going to be the best fit for you. I think a lot of students kind of get um, pressured into going, you know, maybe where their friends are going or where their parents, you know, went to school. Um, and so I think it's important just to kind of figure out, you know, you know, where are you going to be the happiest for the next four years? Not where it gives you the most money, although sometimes that does make us really happy, but, um, but just, you know, where do you think you're going to fit in the best? Where do you think, um, you know, it really comes down to where you think you're going to be the happiest for the next four years, because you don't want to be miserable for the next four years. So um, visit campus and just figure out where, you know, where it's going to be a good fit for you. Great. Thank you. And Mississippi State University. I definitely agree with everything all the other reps have said tonight. That's some great advice. Um, but definitely take the initiative yourself to do the application and the scholarship applications. Um, I know it's natural to maybe want to ask mom or dad to help. Um, but when you are in college, you're going to be doing everything yourself. So definitely take the initiative to do things yourself application wise. Awesome. Thank you so much. And uh, since we have some time, we're going to keep moving through the questions here. So what is your favorite event or tradition on campus? And we'll get started right back up at the top. Sure. So this probably seems not selfish. That's not the right word. But I would think one of my favorite traditions is also something that I was involved with, which was the marching band. So I was in the marching band for four years at Auburn. Um, and I don't know, best four years of my life, best decision I ever made. And I don't think being in band was cool in high school. And maybe it wasn't in college and I just thought it was, but um, it was just a really dynamic way, I think, to be engaged in the football games. Um, and it's just a really special time. And that to say that it doesn't have to all be about football. Like if you're not a huge football fan, Auburn could still be a really good fit for you. And maybe it's just the community that comes with being at a football game, for example. So uh, running out of the tunnel for pregame is something that I will probably never be able to do again. Um, and running in front of 90,000 people is super exhilarating and special. And I still have some of my closest friends from that too. So you can have your experience, whether it's banned or not, and find ways to get engaged. Perhaps that's another piece of advice. Well, Mississippi College. Yeah, I would say my favorite event that we hold on campus is a Saturday in the spring. We have Derby Day, which is a day where the whole campus gathers and like 
gets in on like a big college version of field day and has a bunch of competitions and then ends the night with a crawfish boil on the quad. Um, it's super fun, super sweet. There's live music and it's a really, it's characteristic of what it's like to be at MC. So favorite memory, favorite tradition. <laughs> Jacksonville State University. Thanks. Um, well, first of all, Katie, I would say marching band is definitely cool and people in it are cool coming from, the, I was more on the athletic side in college, but, but that's a lot of fun that, that you were able to do that. Um, for me, our favorite, my favorite tradition, at least, is something called cocky stock. Um, it, we're the Gamecock, so it's based on our mascot, but it's taken off a of Woodstock. And so it's a, a big festival where there's live music and food and games and such going on in our quad or like our grassy area. Nice. Uh, University of Mississippi. Mine's easy, and I'm sure all of our reps on here already know what I'm about to say, but the Grove is probably the best tradition at Ole Miss. As an SEC school, we all have tailgating, but at Ole Miss, tailgating is extravagant. Um, hundreds of thousands of people in 10 acres in the heart of our campus. I'm actually like virtually in the Grove tonight on my background, um, but the Grove has been, you know, one of the best tailgating spots in the country for a long time. Your biggest sports enthusiast, that's a thing that they put on their bucket list of things to do. So even if you're not a sports fan, I highly recommend at least uh, trying out the Grove once. Awesome. And University of South Alabama. Yeah, so mine is a little bit more of a community tradition type thing. So um, since we're located in Mobile, Alabama, we are the home to Mardi Gras. Um, contrary to popular belief, Mobile actually started Mardi Gras, not New Orleans. So Mardi Gras is huge in Mobile. It's huge on campus um, during the Mardi Gras season around February and March. So there's tons going on, um, parades like every weekend um, in downtown Mobile. So it's a lot of fun and our students really get into it and we have a lot of Mardi Gras themed um you know events on campus during that time so just Mardi Gras as a whole um if you're ever in Mobile during that time definitely come by campus or go to a parade in downtown Mobile great thank you and then the Mississippi State University yes yeah, so my favorite tradition besides the cowbell is uh, one of my favorite events called Bulldog Bash. Um, it obviously did not happen in 2020, but hopefully it'll happen again soon when we're able to safely host it. But it always takes place on the Friday night before a home SEC football game. And it's the largest free outdoor concert in the state of Mississippi. We've had some major artists come through like Jason Mraz, Third Eye Blind, um, you name it. I can't think of all of them off the top of my head, but um, it's a really fun time. All the students gather for it. We have alum that come back for it. So it's definitely one of my favorite events at MSU. I'm, I, this, is, this is the second time I caught myself on mute here. Uh, give an interesting or fun fact about your school is our last question. Uh, should be a, an exciting and simple one to answer. Um, but give an interesting or fun fact about your school. Okay, this is probably weird and maybe it's because I'm hungry, but I am super excited that we have a new dining hall coming to campus starting in June. So it'll be up and ready and it'll be like 800 seats, lots of different stations, food will switch out every four weeks, so you'll never get bored. So it's just something that we haven't had on campus in a long time and beautiful building, super excited about it. Awesome, thank you. And Mississippi College? Yeah, fun fact, we used to be an all women's college and things got shaken up and now we have everyone. <laughs> so, <laughs> yep. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Jacksonville State University. Yeah, um, well, we, it's, we, we have a pretty decent success rate in like mainstream sports, but in the last few years, we've also won national championships in cornhole and in bass fishing, which are like not mainstream whatsoever, but we got to be on ESPN for the cornhole one. So it's kind of fun. Nice. And uh, University of Mississippi? I think one of the things that a lot of people don't know about Ole Miss, our speed limit on campus is 18 miles per hour for Archie Manning, uh, father to Eli and Peyton Manning. <laughs> wow. And then uh, University of South Alabama? Yeah, um, so we actually have a brand new football stadium on campus that they just finished building um, last year. So um, it was ready for fall of 2020, which we didn't get to play football in as much as we probably would have liked to, but um, it's a really, really awesome uh, stadium. So if you're ever in Mobile, we'd love to have you for a football game in the fall, safely, of course. But yeah, brand new football stadium, pretty cool thing. Awesome. And then uh, Mississippi State University. 
So my favorite fun fact, um, as I mentioned during my presentation, we have a vet school at Mississippi State and we are home to the Morgan Freeman Equine Center. I hope if you're listening, you know who Morgan Freeman is, but he actually has two horses and they live on campus at our vet school. So I think that's pretty cool. Wow, yeah, that is interesting. All right, we made it through here. So what I'm gonna do is share my very last screen to thank you all for joining us this evening, our presenters and our attendees. Uh, we just appreciate you taking the time out to continue to make the college search process um, just a smooth and, and an easy transition as possible throughout this time. Um, so there is gonna be a quick four question survey that's gonna appear when you close your window. Um, we'd love for you to fill that out. Uh, there's gonna be other sessions in the next day or two that you can check out for this fair specifically at strivescan.com slash Tennessee, where the recordings for the sessions will also be available within about a week. So good luck everybody on the search process uh, and can't wait to see where y'all end up. All right, have a great night.